Good day, everyone. This is Rushad Mistry from the Mechanical Engineering Department, Wilson Institute of Technology, Solapur. And today I'll be discussing the remaining robot configurations in this particular lecture series on robot configurations. Um, at the end of the session, the learner will be able to explain SCARA and parallel configuration and identify applications of this configuration based on their features. So we studied um, spherical, cylindrical, and the jointed arm configuration in the previous lectures, and today we will um, uh, wind up by discussing SCARA and parallel, or which is also called as delta configuration. No. SCARA configuration uh, is, is one of the most widely used configurations in the electronics industry, especially for assembly tasks. Now, in 1981, the Japanese company uh, Sanyo and Pencil and NEC actually um, uh, together worked on a new concept for assembly robots. And this was actually termed as SCARA, which stands for Selective Compliance Assembly Robot Arm. And it was, uh, it was developed by Hiroshio Makino, which is who was a professor at the University of Yamanashi. And uh, the, uh, the, um, the professor, along with Japanese companies, did extensive research, and then they came up with this particular configuration, which is very specifically to, uh, suited for assembly operations for the electronics industry. It's actually a type of cylindrical configuration. The arm is rigid in the Z axis and it is pliable in the X, Y axis. And this allows it to travel very fast in the X, Y plane and uh, very quick up and down movement in the vertical direction or the Z axis. Here you can look at the configuration. See, this is actually a rotary joint. This is also a rotary joint. So even this configuration is often turned as RRR configuration. But not to be confused with the jointed arm, because in the in case of SCARA, all jointed um, the, these joints are vertical. They are along the vertical axis. So the so these are the robots, and the first three principal axes form a cylindrical coordinate systems. It's also called as RRR configuration. But like I said, uh, unlike the jointed arm, this has all joints in the vertical direction. It's a combination, you can say, of cylindrical and revolute configurations operating in a horizontal plane. The, the control solution is quite simple compared to jointed arm, and it's become extremely popular in the electronics industry. Here are some sample images of the SCARA configuration. Um, there are several top manufacturers, Epson actually being one of them. Epson actually specializes in the, this and the Delta configuration. It doesn't make, in, uh, hardly makes any other configuration, but specializes very specifically in the uh, SCARA configuration. So primarily, uh, applications, like I said, were meant for um, uh, uh, the electronics industry. But we can generalize that it is meant for pick and place and any packaging operations typically involving a vertical movement. So it can be used for, you can say, The advantages of SCARA configuration are it's extremely maneuverable within the work area, very fast, very high accuracy, and it has a decent payload in the vertical range. Um, when I say decent payload, let me tell you that this configuration will rarely be built in payload in, ex uh, in excess of 10 kg. Typical payloads actually range from 0.5 kg to around 10 kg. Um, you can say another feature is it's not as dexterous compared to other configurations. And it is not really designed for heavy payloads. So you can consider it as a disadvantage. But to be very honest, that is not really the intent in building these particular robots. Um, these are almost typically four axis configurations, because three being the first three axis, and one axis, obviously, is that if the end effector, which typically has an up and down movement. Okay. So what can you think of possible applications of these configurations? Uh, have you seen this particular configuration on TV? or let's say in a previous class, try to, figure, try to recall if you, can, if, you, if you have come across this particular configuration anywhere before. Welcome back. Now just uh, let us look at some applications of this SCARA robot. Now at the one at the left, you will see it's um, the SCARA robot being used for a, a general pick and place task along with a, you can say an image sensor, which is a camera on the top. Uh, at now the you can see the animation at the right shows you a SCARA robot, typically involved in an assembly kind of a task. Um, and th th remember, these are just representative animations, not real world examples, but they give you an idea of how this configuration actually works. And one more thing is, this has actually been slowed down significantly I in practice. The SCARA configuration is very fast. And you will you will see this when you actually watch the videos which I have shared in the link later. Okay. 
the SCARA robot application typically um, involves actually machine tending as well and this sketch gives you an idea. So here you have a SCARA robot which is tending a machine machine tool which may be which, which can be like kind of a lathe machine and it can pick up uh, one of the workpiece put it on the conveyor and so on and so forth. So this is a very very typical application of a SCARA robot when used for machine tending work. This is another application of SCARA robot in which you can see you have certain parts being fed to the robot on the conveyor then it picks up the part and puts it into the part feeder. So this is again a sketch demonstrating an application of a SCARA robot. A s another similar application for inspection and also sorting. So this is one more application that SCARA robots are very widely used. <coughs> now let us move to the last configuration in this that is the parallel or the Nelta configuration. A parallel configuration uses several computer controlled serial chains to support a single platform or end effector. And the most po popular parallel ma manipulator is obviously the Shevard platform, which finds application in aircraft simulators. And they are made up of six linear actuators that support a movable base for the tank or the aircraft. So aircraft simulators were the ones they were more popular, but now they are used as tank and even automobile simulators. This is, you can say, uh, uh, sample images of Delta parallel configuration by different manufacturers. Uh, the, the one on the left being Farnook, the center one being Adept, and the one at the right from ABB. Um, now, let's see why they are called parallel configuration. The parallel distinction as opposed to serial is because the end effector of this linkage is connected to its base by a number of links, usually in between three to six and a separate ending, independent linkages which work in parallel, hence the word parallel. They are not in series like the other manipulators. So here the word parallel is actually from the topological sense. Uh, nowadays people, people prefer calling it delta because if you look from the front it appears as a triangle which is basically the Greek alphabet delta. The parallel manipulator is designed so that each chain is usually short, simple and hence can be rigid again unwanted movement. That's also one of the reasons this configuration is very accurate uh, compared to serial configurations where the error can accumulate. Okay. Control calculations involving forward and reverse kinematics can be tri tricky compared to others. Uh, that's one of its limitations. It's less dexterous compared to the jointed arm. It's not really very maneuverable, especially like you, uh, you, you can't reach around obstacles. It is more suited when you, the approach is from the top. It's also not suited for complex tasks such as welding and spot welding unless for very small parts. So uh, the, the word arc welding and spot welding can be a bit too vague in this sense. So even though it can be used, it's not the most widely used application for uh, delta, um, uh, delta configuration. So typical applications, flight simulators, tank simulators, automobile simulators, as obviously the shared platform, and assembly tasks, pick and other places pick and place tasks in electronics and the food industry. Now here you have an image of uh, a pick and place task uh, being performed by uh, parallel robots. Though a lot of textbooks do include a uh, lot of generic applications, uh, it, uh, like I said, it's highly unlikely that this will be used for uh, some he kind of heavy duty application ca compared like to, to the jointed arm configuration. Again, these are some sample applications of the Delta configuration. You'll see most of the even sample images are from the electronics industry. That's why, that's one of the reason um, um, it's wide, very widely used in the electronic industry. Again, a few applications. Here it is used uh, for pick and place task with vacuum grippers attached to it. So what is, uh, you can say the state of the art in, pa in parallel or delta robots? Uh, it's basically in high speed, high accuracy positioning um, uh, devices, especially in PCB assembly, it is extensively used. It's also used uh, in high speed precision milling machines and as micro manipulators mounted on other configurations. So you'll find this being mounted on other configurations. These are typical, some of the state of the art applications for the parallel configuration. Now, if you want to look at sample videos, I have included them in this link. I definitely would recommend you to go through it and see them uh, in, um, in action in real time. Again, when it comes to robot, I definitely recommend the websites of the manufacturers, especially Yamaha and Omron, who have generous amount of information to share on the SCARA platform, um, um, along with the standard textbooks for this particular subject. So, thank you very much.